What's up guys, it's Wences. Welcome back to my channel. We talk about creating an epic life on your terms here. And one of the main things that we have to do is to have relationships that help us become that person. And with that being said, we're talking today about gaslighting because gaslighting can be very detrimental to your mental health, to your development, and just for you to move on with your life, not feeling stuck. And so I really wanna narrow down on how to actually spot if somebody is gaslighting you what it means and how to get out of it, how to confront it in the moment so you actually come out of it knowing that you learned your lesson and this will never happen again. Before we get started, I want to remind you if you want to work with me privately, check out the link in the description on 101 Coaching. Follow me on Instagram to stay up to date. Give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. I can tell you one thing with 100% certainty is that I wouldn't be here. I wouldn't live the life I live if I wasn't gaslighted. So I really want you to think about if you've been in a situation like this, that this can be the changing point of your life, that because you experience this, you find the strength to change your life and to understand how everything led up to it. Because it's not like everybody gets gaslighted. Most people don't experience this just one time in their life. There are maybe situations where it's just a little bit and sometimes more extreme, but you barely find somebody who says, I've never, ever, ever had anything in that regard. And then I was completely gaslighted. So I, for example, when I went through the biggest situation in my life and when I got really gaslighted, that was, as I said, the turning point of my life. It was the most difficult thing I ever went through. Learning how to deal with it, understanding who I am, redefining myself within that, all of that played a huge role and I really want you to think about your situation and to see that this could be the possibility of your lifetime. So we really want to talk about how it happens, why you're the one chosen for it and how you can change the entire narrative by confronting that person in the moment or just for you to move on and create a new life for yourself. So most of the time the gaslighting situation starts with the typical love bombing. So love bombing means that you meet somebody and they give you this feeling of appreciation that you can't seem to find anywhere else and it's so intense and most of the time people actually find each other so the person doing the love bombing the person who does the gaslighting and the person who needs it so much they find each other because it's the perfect codependent relationship because that person who does the gaslighting that person who does the love bombing they see that aspect of you that you're hiding from the world. They see that aspect of you that needs validation and you're not letting that out. So it can be that it's the version of you that is all exciting or it can be the version of you that's all deep or whatever it is that you actually love so much about yourself but you don't dare to actually bring it out. You want people to see that. You want people to make you feel like that part is being seen. I'm with you on that but you don't dare to live it out because there are certain things that are keeping us from this. For example, you experience something in childhood which made you believe that you have to hide this part of yourself otherwise you're not going to get accepted. So what do you do? You find this one person and you feel, oh, that person just got me. There was this one thing that this person did. They gave me this love and this appreciation. It made me feel so alive. I need this. And this mainly happens after actually you have that encounter. It's very rarely that you meet that person and in that instant you're directly hooked. You may be directly hooked, but you're not aware of it until you may be home later on and then you recognize, oh, I kind of keep remembering that. I kind of keep seeing that situation and that person over and over again. And you know, I don't really think that most people actually go for this maliciously. So people who do the love bombing, I really believe that they subconsciously do this. They subconsciously see that there's something you need and they think if I give this to her or him, then they will need me. And that's the way I would get appreciation. That's how I would get value. That's how I would get love. But I would have control of it because it's just too risky to just be myself and you know just ask for love and appreciation and not have any control over it. So we all kind of have this to an aspect but the people who actually do the gaslighting they need this very strongly and I don't believe they do understand what's going on. I don't believe that people are actually doing it maliciously and that's why I never feel like it's right for you to confront that person in a way of oh you're gaslighting me or oh you're manipulating me and don't you see that you're projecting? You do not ever 
in any kind of situation when it comes to this, need that person to understand where you're coming from. You don't need that person to see their mistake. You don't need that person to see that they did you wrong. And I know how hard it is because all of those situations lead up to you being completely out of control and you want to gain that control and you want to gain it by actually having that other person apologize to you by having that other person see that they did something wrong, but that's probably not going to happen. But what you can do and what you can make that person understand is that you don't need them that they never had that control over you because you always had the autonomy of deciding what you want and who you are. And that thing is sort of the best revenge. That is the thing that makes the other person really lose all of their grip because they really believe up to this point they have control over you and that's the only way for them to live. So by showing them that you can live without them, which they didn't think was possible, that thing will actually change their mind. That will change in many cases how they approach life and they will give you some kind of satisfaction, but it will never be the entire deal. So if your main goal is only to make that person understand that you're right for you to win that situation, you'll not really get over it. You have to understand that this entire process is a great opportunity for you to understand that you actually allowed that person way too much power over you why you allowed it and what you can do so you don't have this aspect of you anymore that you yearn for it to be loved. Like that is the entire goal and the entire lesson learned here. Because once we get through this, once we learn how to confront it, I really want you at the end of all of this experience to understand that this only happens because of this aspect of you that you're not living out. Because the moment you start living this part of you out, you get validation from life for it. And you're so satisfied in this aspect that you don't get taken back by this. You don't get addicted by this one person who can give you this because you feel there's no other way to get this. So we really want to get there. But first, let's recognize when you're being gaslighted and what you can do to confront it. So if you get in situations where you feel like that person looks up to you or admires you and puts you on like this pedestal and there's no real reason for it. So that person hasn't really gotten to know you. They haven't really experienced the best part of you. They just see you and then they light up. Something happened. They want to have all of your attention. They're so in awe of you and you kind of feel like that's unusual. If you get in a situation like this, that's a very big sign of that there is some kind of love bombing going on. And that is a prerequisite of gaslighting very, very often. Because as I said, what happens in that moment? You actually get something that you want so much, but you don't feel like I actually did something to deserve this. You know, in the end, we should all understand that we deserve to be loved for ourselves and we don't have to do anything specifically. But every situation like this, you will feel that it comes too fast that that person doesn't really know you yet. You could be somebody who doesn't have good intentions. You could be somebody who's boring. They don't know this yet. They haven't gotten to know you. They haven't seen any negative sides of you maybe, and they directly do this. So be very, very cautious when this happens. That is a very big red flag. So let's say this happened to you and you haven't even recognized it, but for some reason you really loved what happened. It made you feel good because what happens at that moment? If you get there, you recognize, oh, I need this. I need this so badly. You don't think about it consciously, but you know what happens subconsciously? You become the supporting role of their movie in your own movie. So if you're new to my channel, you might not know this concept I work with constantly, which is be the leading character of your own movie. Be the leading man, be the leading lady of your own life. And every time you get in situations where you're being love bombed and gaslighted afterwards, it's all about losing that center point that you are the main thing in your life, that it's all about the way you see reality. Gaslighting is about taking that aspect away from you. And in the end, it's always you who allows it. So before we talk about how to actually overcome this pattern altogether so you don't get into situations over and over again, let's talk about how to confront that. How to confront it specifically if that person shames you in public, if it makes you feel like you lost all control, everybody believes that other person, not you. What do you do? How do you react in that situation so you actually put an end to that? And it really is about not doing what you feel like. Because what does your feeling tell you? It tells 
of you, we're living in this one reality. I need to win over that person. I need to confront them. I need to actually convince them that I'm right. And if you do this, you try to understand the situation. You're standing under it. And if you're standing under it, you can't get above of it. You can't really move on. So if you really want to confront your gaslighter in that situation, you really have to change the way you see that person. That person is not who you want them to be. That is what you projected onto that person and that allowed them to have that much power over you. So you have to do something that is really counterintuitive at first. You have to do something that will force you to get out of your comfort zone. And one way would be to give that person a completely different personality. To understand that the personality you gave that person, it's just something you made up. What have they actually shown you in reality? Not what you would want them to be. Because if somebody gaslighted you, it's because before that you had a better image of them or they had all that potential to be such a great friend. But the truth is they haven't been kind to you. They haven't been your best friend. They haven't really given you what you deserve. Why are you allowing them to have such big real estate in your mind when they're not being the person you would want them to be? When they're not being kind to you, when they're not supporting you or respecting you. So you got to really give that person a new personality in your mind to understand that, okay, I thought this is Anna, but you know what? This isn't Anna. Anna is just the imagination. I thought she could be so we could be best friends. And actually this is Emma and Emma is kind of hard. Emma is not the person who is my best friend. Emma is not somebody I should be vulnerable around. I have to be like somebody they just met and I have to be really harsh towards them. And you know what? It's going to take you out of your comfort zone because you're going to feel like a bad person. What it takes to actually confront that person is to actually be mean, to be a mirror. And you know what? It's not even going to be that mean, but it's going to feel like it because you have trained your mind and so have they to put your own needs behind. So the moment you say, well, you've been mean towards me and what I'm doing is I'm actually just showing you a mirror. I'm showing you a mirror of what you are and I'm showing that so you stop. You make them feel what they made you feel. I remember when I was a kid, I had this crush on this boy and you know, we didn't have the best interactions. I kind of rejected him and then it got like all weird. And that's actually how I got even more hooked on him because I felt, Oh, I'm a bad person. What did I do wrong? But you know what happened? He started mocking me in front of my other friends. And I remember to this day very vividly how I knew exactly what to say, exactly how to make him feel bad. But I felt like I couldn't do that. That would be so harsh. That would be so mean. And I actually felt what I would say is even much worse than what he could actually do to me. And you know what? It might have been true, but if that person doesn't stop, you have to bite back. Sometimes you have to be the person who bites back so you actually protect yourself. And that is what you have to do in that situation. You have to be that person that you feel like nobody's gonna like, you're gonna be harsh, you might be too much, too intense, but that person has to understand the energy they've put on you. Because if you're a person who is all about harmony, if you're a person who's all about calmness and that person makes you actually react like this, then that is actually an energy that they have put on you. All you do is you give that energy back to them. That's the only way to actually confront that person, to allow yourself to be angry towards that person and to focus all your anger towards them. That is something that you actually need very often in order to move on. I was completely scared of that because I felt once I start, there is no end to my anger, but there always is. You just don't know it yet if you're not somebody who's used to expressing that anger. But it will be that you actually have to do that. You have to make that person feel like they're just a supporting role in your movie. They're not the main thing you're going to focus on. You are the main thing you're going to focus on. If you think about what your life is all about, who you are and where you want to go, then they can only play that supporting role in your life and they have to play by your rules. 
always. Everybody in your life has to play by your rules. You allow other people to come in and you make compromises, but it all has to be within the realm of the things that you're able and willing to negotiate. And certain things are non-negotiables. And up until this point, if you have gotten in a situation where people have gaslighted you, you've actually allowed some things to be negotiables, which are non-negotiables. And one of those things is that you need your sanity. The moment a person tries to manipulate you, tries to make you feel like you're too sensitive, tries to make you feel like you're doing something wrong, you have to know that that is something you won't accept. It's not about you understanding where they're coming from or why they act the way they want. And I'm somebody who loves to understand other people's motives, the way they think, where are they coming from, but none of this will be at the expense of my own sanity and about me living in my own reality realm. That is the thing. That is what you can do to confront that person. You really have to be that mean version of yourself in a way that you think, okay, what they've done to me, I have to do back to them. Because if there's no consequence to their behavior, why would they stop? And remember, the most important thing here, you do not need to convince them that you're a good person. You do not need to convince them that you don't mean anything bad by it. You do not need to convince them that they are just in the wrong. It's all about you just winning in your own reality and leaving them behind in a way of no matter what you're saying, I'm not giving you any kind of credit. And I understand it's not always that easy, specifically when you're in a social situation where that person has more social power than you, but then it's more about you stepping out of that social realm altogether. If you're in a situation where these things happen over and over again, it's about understanding how to change that situation, how to actually include other people who give you that sanity. So when you're in this situation, this doesn't have that big of an impact on you. It doesn't mean that you don't have to be in that situation at all, but it just becomes a smaller part of your life. More and more of your life has to become about you. And that's when we get to the most important aspect here, and that is to actually become a person who is never the target of gaslighters because you cannot change gaslighters. You might be at a situation where you actually hurt them so much that they might learn from it and that they don't dare to do this again. Like I've been in situations like this and they were extremely hard for me. And you know, looking back at it, I can definitely tell you I had no other choice. I really was forced to do something that extreme because I was just having a complete reality crisis. I lost all sense of self and I just had to like fight myself out of there. And it included me being completely mean towards that other person, hitting them where it hurt most, because that's the only way I could explain to them, you cannot do this anymore. I didn't see another choice. But now being out of that situation, I can definitely tell you it wasn't on me to make that person feel that pain and change altogether. If I would meet somebody like this, I don't see it as my responsibility to change that person. I cannot. If I actually get to a situation, it really has to be that bad because it was so painful for me to confront that person that badly that I never ever wanted to be in that situation again. So how do I do that? How do I make sure that I never get in situations like this and that I'm never the target of gaslighters altogether? You heal that wound. Remember that wound I was telling you about that the narcissist or the gaslighter sees and definitely wants to hunt into and is all focused on and knows exactly what they're looking for. If you close that, they will not see you as a target because you cannot give anything to them anymore. So how do you actually close that wound? Well, think of the situations where you were gaslighted and think about why you wanted to be around that person and what kind of feeling they give back to you. For me, very often it was, I saw that they're hurting and I wanted to be somebody who saves them. I wanted to be somebody who makes them feel they're valued. And the moment they made me feel like I'm not a good person and I'm all selfish and thinking about myself only, that's when I got hooked. That's when my only thought was, how can I convince them that I am a good person? How can I convince them that I never meant any harm? Why did I think that? Well, guess what? Of course, something happened in my childhood that got me to that point where I felt every time it was about me 
it was that I actually said to the other person, you know, caretaker or somebody of my peers, oh, you don't care. And that person got so mad and just abandoned me and just took away their love, look away their appreciation. And you know what? That's what the gaslighter does. They love bomb you. And then if you care about yourself, they take it away. You know, that's when, you know, the entire manipulation comes and they make you feel like you did something so horrible for taking this love away when in the end, you didn't do much. You just maybe like didn't answer them right away or you didn't put all your attention towards them, but they know that you need this validation. And that thing that, you know, that wound is so uniquely you. And if you think about the gaslighting situations, you will know exactly what that is. What is it that first off that person lives out that you want? Very often happens all the time as well, because then you project even more onto that person and you want much more of that. With me, it was, for example, that that person actually was socially active. They actually went out and were somebody who did something for society. They actually didn't just stay in their own bubble. They really made the world a better place. But of course, you know, there are other things going on, but that's what I saw. That's what I saw. And I felt I wasn't doing that. I wasn't standing up and actually giving my gifts. I was hiding them because of fears that it's not good enough. That was the one thing I saw in the other person. And the second thing was exactly that I'm a bad person for caring about myself. And the third thing was that I thought they needed me to save them. They needed me. Who else is going to save them? They have so much pain and I'm the one who's going to make it happen for them. If I'm not there, who is there? I couldn't dare to just leave them alone. So that's how the entire situation happened. So if you know those things, think about what can you do in your real life? Like not just the things in your mind, not the things that, you know, somebody else could see and another person couldn't see something that you can actually actualize in your life where you get to live out those things. So first off, it was for me to understand it's okay to put myself first. That is something that you have to deal with and you have to deal with the pain of, you know, people abandoning you if you do this, which of course a lot of people will do because your reality matches what you think about yourself. And if you believe I don't deserve to put myself first, you're going to surround yourself with people who also don't think it's okay for you to put yourself first. So the moment you start putting yourself first, you will, you know, feel some kind of abandonment. You confront yourself with all those fears you actually weren't able to confront yourself with when you were a child and this happened. So you actually have to work through it. You have to live through it and see that you're going to be fine at the other end. Go through that pain of abandonment and this just being like a side project of this entire thing, just knowing that this is something that you have to do all together because in order to always be the center point of your life and not being able to be taken away from your center point to really focus all your attention on the other person, that thing will not happen ever again if you really put yourself first. So that is really a necessity. This is not a negotiable. This is something that you have to do. But that being said, how are you going to build up your life? How are you going to build the support system as in your reality, the people in your life and all that you care about based on something that you actually thought you're going to get through that situation. That person was giving you something that you needed. What was that thing? And that thing may be that you need to be validated for being there for that person, for being understanding. For me, it was, they made me feel like I can help them. I would understand them. So what did I do? I started this channel because this channel gave me a healthy outlet to be of service, to help people understand what they're going through. And I would get the validation from people who actually want to give it to me in a way of, I am sharing this with you and you appreciate it. You give me love, you support me. And the people who don't are just not here, but there's no codependency in it. I don't do this to that extreme in my closest friendships because I know that then it gets blurry. If you're like doing this with the closest people in your life, there's always going to be some kind of codependency in there. There's always going to be something that you really need there. So what can you create in your life that you prove to yourself that you can do this, that feeling that you wanted that person to give to you, you can give that to yourself. So imagine you have somebody who's all successful and they love their life and then they see you and they actually appreciate you. Then you kind of feel like, Oh, 
You know, it's kind of like I'm living through them. You feel like you're being successful and you love life because you're being liked and loved and appreciated by someone who has all of those things. But in order not to be the victim of a gaslighter, you have to do the things that will make you feel like you love life. You'll have to make the things that will make you feel successful. So if you want to write that book, write it. If you write that book, you know there's not a situation where you could be dependent on that other person who does all of those things you want to do. You don't need that because you're giving it to yourself by doing the action steps which prove this to yourself. And the more you do those action steps, the more your sense of self becomes concrete. You actually pushed out all the things you allowed other people to put into your reality room and you build something that is more and more you. And that way, when it gets concrete, you cannot be taken by a gaslighter because this is so obviously you, it's unshakable. And that is where you want to go to. This is where you want to be. It's about you saying, I believe in myself and I will put myself first. I will bet on my personal belief of life and whoever wants to be in my life, they can go into their direction and we can stay next to each other and support each other, but I will not be the sidekick of letting them create what they want. You have to put your understanding on what you want first. So if you really in situations where you get gaslighted over and over again, really take on the challenge of changing that aspect of yours because it will happen over and over again. You will always get in situations like this and you'll always ask yourself, why don't I feel I have the power to get over that, to really confront that person. This will happen unless you start building this core aspect of you because then so much of your attention will be on you that you don't have any space left to put onto people who are not supporting you in who you want to be. I really hope that video helped you. If you want to have more help on creating that core of yourself, check out the webinar we're doing on the 23rd of November. It's going to be live. You can ask your questions. Um, you can sign up. The link is in the description. If you want to work with me privately and get my help in the situation you're in, you also find the information below. And if you want to dive deeper on this topic, watch the video on the three things you should never compromise in relationships. Like always guys, I wish you a wonderful day, a great week, and I talk to you next time. Bye.